This is something that you can only see if you have an account, but it sort of blew this whole thing wide open for me. This is just a jobs hub for children, which many of these jobs pay in Robux. I applied to some, I didn't hear back. Many of them say things like, you have to be 13 or older. Seeing this page, I mean, find jobs right at the top of create.roblox.com, yeah. like it does stop being play. Oh, and then the compensation there is 200 Robux. So like, oh God, 100,000 Roblox is a thousand dollars. Is that 20 cents? I mean, that seems bad. The job board is so bad, Antonio has decided to bypass it entirely. It's not that easy to make money on Roblox, but using third-party apps like Fiverr, for example, I've earned way more money than Roblox. When we looked at the numbers, it was. Like, he's absolutely right. He was making a lot more money on Fiverr. So if we're in a situation where people are doing real labor and a website like Fiverr is giving them better opportunities than the place where they are selling the labor itself. That is insane. Fiverr should not be the better alternative no. to get paid. Okay, so I'm not really familiar with the whole job board thing. Like I've checked out Discord servers, uh, like row devs and stuff, hidden devs, um, where they do this sort of thing privately though. But I imagine that it's just, you know, like a public forum for people to post jobs and Roblox doesn't really have any say in that. So if someone is, you know, paying someone else 200 Robux to make a model, for example, that's not on Roblox. However, there is no way that, you know, you can pay someone in Robux without Roblox taking 30%. So that part, you know, like I said, it's a little bit sketchy to me, but um, like if you pay someone through group funds, you know, 30% of those funds have already gone to Roblox, which we talked about. Um, or, you know, if you, if you get someone to buy a game pass uh, from you to pay them, then Roblox takes that 30%. So this kind of, goes back to the whole repeated sync economy that, you know, that is Robux. But, um, you know, they are right, in my opinion, that, you know, places like Fiverr seem to be uh, a much better alternative. But have you experienced, um, have you had experience with the job board, Ice? Um, and do you have any thoughts on, you know, how it works and stuff? Uh, I do. Sorry, I was just looking at the uh, the feed there on Please Buy Me, seeing the cards that are getting sold. <laughs> oh, yeah, I totally understand that. Uh, <laughs> um... So, right. So, yes, uh, on this topic. Firstly, when when you're paying somebody uh, in Robux, that you know, the tax is known, right? Everybody yeah. knows about the the row tax. Mm -hmm. um, it has its own name. Yeah. <laughs> so, normally, if you're accepting payment in Robux through a Game Pass or something like that, then you've negotiated who is going to cover the tax, right? right. Um, well, the Will the person hiring you, are they going to cover the tax and put, you know, do the math and put the extra Robux into that payment so that you get what was advertised? Or are you going to accept that whatever's advertised, you're actually going to get 30% less? Mm -hmm. um, however, if you're paying somebody out of group funds, like we kind of talked about, that's not taxed again. Yeah. So that's that's really the preferred method if you're going to pay somebody in, in Robux. Um, the user gets that whole amount transferred to them. But... The only caveat to that, and it's not an issue as much as an inconvenience, the person does have to be a member of your group, and they have to be a member of your group for a certain amount of time before you can actually send them funds. Right. I think it's to avoid, like, either scamming or, like, you know, uh, possibly even, like, money laundering. Um, <laughs> uh, um, um, you know, probably a few reasons, but uh, anyone can, as far as the job boards go, anyone can post jobs on the Roblox job board. So as, as you said, it's just really a dedicated forum with a, a, a pre-built structure mm -hmm. that Roblox has provided. Roblox doesn't post jobs. Roblox doesn't create games. They, they do not compete against their dev community, right. um, which is a positive thing. And it's up to you to comb through them and look for things that are worth your time. Um, you do have kids on there that are posting. So, you know, to them, they might think 300 Robux is a lot, or, yep. you know. Um, and then you have real, you know, seasoned devs on there and, and older people who, you know, realize the actual skill and time and effort things like this take. Yep. And, um, you know, you have groups posting on there and it could be worth thousands of dollars, um, you know. And something that um, I don't think they mentioned the video too, but it's not just – it's not just people posting jobs on there. Uh, you create your own like talent profile on there too that you can update and you can update kind of like a resume, right? You can put the types of skills you have. You could put um, 
links to games you've worked on before and, and things like that. Yep. And whether you're open to taking work right now or not, what you're willing to do, uh, if you're looking for full time or part time or commission based work. So, you know, you can go about it that way, too. People can send you messages and reach out to you if they see your profile like, hey, I have a job you might be interested in. Um, but most commissioning happens off platform. Right. So, again, Twitter is huge for this as well as many discord servers like you mentioned the road devs hidden devs there's 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 very very large discord servers that have worked out uh they've worked out whole systems you know to make sure people aren't defrauding people and things are legit right they make you verify your roblox account with their discord server yep. so they know you're a legitimate person um but yeah so it it, it happens and fiverr again is a more than legitimate avenue to go to look for work or to look to hire somebody to do some work for you for a game yep. um you know and i don't understand why they picked fiverr specifically right because you also see tons of fiverr listings for any other game engine so it's odd that it's only a problem with the roblox game engine yeah um, <laughs> but you know sometimes sometimes even outside the platform people still choose to get paid in robux um through these methods uh, when I've received payments, I've always chosen to just be paid in U.S. dollars, uh, and I normally I normally go through PayPal, right? So yeah. you know, there's there's legitimate accounts going there, and and you have records of it and everything. And I also my own personal rules I I won't start a commission uh, unless I'm paid at least part of the fee up front to protect myself, right? It's just good practice. Yeah. Of um, but that's a we could go in a whole other video about things like that. So <laughs> I won't go into more, but. Yeah, maybe one day, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I'd say about that topic. There's no Roblox HR, no Roblox Developers Union effort, nowhere these underpaid and overworked kids can turn to as their labor rights are violated multiple times over. So I, I don't think that this is a fair statement. I mean, no one is forcing these kids to work. Like, we talked about this. They're not working for Roblox Corp. They're not trying to earn a living out of necessity, or at least, you know, they shouldn't be. So, yeah, again, it's, it's, it's absolute nonsense, right? They aren't having labor rights violate it because they're not employees. They're not forced to log in and try to make a game. That's their hobby. It's their, it's their passion. It's their side gig, um, you know, whatever it may be. And that's not just the, the kids, right? It's teens, it's adults. It's, you know, the, the platform is so age diverse. Um, it's, it's anything but forced or coerced, it, you know. It also shows how out of touch these people are with the Roblox community, you know, saying, again, we're going back to the, the previous talk, but Fiverr shouldn't be a better alternative to get paid. Like, what? What are, are you being for real right now? It's, we, we just talked about, you know, how people are not Roblox employees. They don't get a paycheck from Roblox. Really, what you are is a freelancer. Whether you make and sell whole games, or if you just do 3D modeling or just make decals and textures or whatever the many facets, that is, that's exactly what Fiverr is made for, for freelance work, yep. commissioning people. So if you're taking commissions, if that's something you're interested in, it, it, make sure you set yourself up a Fiverr profile because between social media and Fiverr, you will find work that, you know, if that's your goal. <laughs> I've spoken to Roblox developers who might be 14 and in school and crunching, working 10, 12 hours on weekends just to try and get their game out according to pressures that are applied to them by a boss who might be another kid who you've not met. Like, it's just crackers. Again, this doesn't really hold water to me. Like, when I was younger, you know, like I made Flash games. I don't know if anybody who's watching actually knows what Flash is. I know Fuzz, when I told him, he was like, what's Flash? But <laughs> um, yeah, it's basically web games uh, for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, so, like, I had to pay, you know, for Adobe Flash, which is, you know, the the, the like the equivalent of Studio, um, like animation software, basically with with a scripting language called ActionScript. Um, so, you know, you use that to to make those games. Basically, um, Roblox doesn't charge you upfront, you know, to use their platform. If you're feeling overworked and underpaid, that's not Roblox's fault. You know, they, they give you the tools to create and monetize. It's your choice whether you want to actually try and make money off of it. And so, like, by accessing the dev tools, you know, you're agreeing with, with those terms. Whether they're fair or not is another story, of course. But, um, 
if you're working with other kids or even adults and they're not paying you fairly, that's an issue you know, completely outside of Roblox itself. So like I made my games in Flash with absolutely zero guarantee that they would make money. I had to put Google ads around my games on my website, which again, you know, I had to pay for, um, you know, the web space and all that. Um, or I had to mm -hmm. upload to places like Newgrounds, you know, uh, where they would. Oh man, I remember Newgrounds. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, you know, they would, they would pay you based on, you know, whatever, but they would take a cut, of course. So it was, you know, it was very cutthroat and like, it was rough. Like, honestly, like I, I wish I had something like Roblox when I was a kid. Like, I, I don't agree with some of their practices, but to be honest, like the reason that they're able to get away with it, it's just sim simply because they don't have any real competition. And I mean, I know there's core, um, you know, that, uh, basically like a Roblox competitor. They also use the same scripting language and, uh, but it's more like, uh, you know, like high, higher res 3D models and stuff. Uh, but I, like, I don't know a lot of people who actually use it or are really familiar with it. So like Roblox definitely needs competitors. You know, if, if, if people are going to expect drastic changes then that's, that's one of the ways that it's going to happen. But I mean, I don't necessarily think that there's a huge problem here, you know, but that's really all there is to it. Yeah. I mean, um, I've actually, I've used core. Um, okay. I've, I've checked it out. I, I yeah. do have it downloaded. It, it didn't spend a lot of time on it, but it wasn't really for me that the studio tools look very similar to Roblox yeah. Yeah. studio. Um, and I think there was even a little thing when it kind of was first coming out that they were actively aiming at trying to poach like people who have experience on Roblox, like, Hey, we're like that. You, you'll be familiar with our tools, but we give you higher cuts. Yep. Um, and they, they do right Their their percentages and stuff like that are uh, a significant amount more, mm. but their player base and is nowhere close. Right. And, uh, exactly. their, su their support and things like that. So yeah, you're getting a bigger percentage, but you're getting a bigger <laughs> percentage of a, a much, much tinier pie. Yeah. Um, you know, so, but people don't really think about that. Mm. Um, and it just wasn't for me anyway. I didn't feel as polished. Yeah. But yeah, so again, this is being presented as Roblox has hired these kids and these teenagers to work for them. Mm -hmm. Roblox has not. They've provided free tools to learn from, you know, and all the documentation to learn from to create games. And you have the opportunity or possibility to earn money from doing it. No guarantee. Mm -hmm. When you download Roblox Studio or you go through any of the tutorial documentation for it, Nowhere does it say you will make money, mm -hmm. you know, you will be paid this amount. Yeah, it doesn't say that anyone crunching, you know, and getting burned out. They're doing it to themselves. Yeah, It's, you know, maybe it's not a bad thing. It could be their own personal drive, their own ambition, you know, that's doing it. But it's it's not an outside force doing it. It's not Roblox Corporation doing it, you know. They don't have a time card that are like, you, you know, you need to work overtime this week. Yeah. Um, and if they've, if they've decided to work with a team of people, that was also their choice. Yeah. Now, most teams that I've seen, you know, and I've even, you know, worked on, right. Most teams working together, they're not official businesses or employers either. They're just a group of freelancers of developers who each have certain skills. And they just said, Hey, let's try and make this together. You know, because you're strong here and I'm not, and I'm strong here and you're not. Like we could tag team this and maybe make a great game. Mm -hmm. If if it isn't working out, just walk away. Yeah. You know, and uh, we've talked about the the, you know, people can do bad things because they're anonymous on the internet, but that's also kind of part of the great thing is, <laughs> honestly, if you meet somebody and you don't get along with them just walk away and stop interacting with them. You, you're never going to run into that person again. Right. <laughs> There's no, you know, the problem solved. Yep. Um, the legitimate companies of game devs on the platform, you know, and the amount of those companies is growing more and more numerous. So thank you, Roblox. Uh, they're not hiring little kids. You know, they're not going on the Roblox job form and saying, hey, you know, little Mikey, if for 500 Robux, I'll pay you to come work, you know, 72 hours a week here. They're actual legal companies following normal hiring laws applicable to them, you know, in their country and whatnot. Um, Roblox hasn't hired anyone or forced anyone to use their tools to make the games. They've also not promised a guarantee of fame and fortune by using their tools. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like, you know, 
there aren't success stories on the platform. It's like YouTube. Like many many people grind and you know push themselves to get popular on the platform, but in reality, only a small percentage of them actually do make it. And it's the same with any social platform, really. Yeah, there's only so many Mr. Beast, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There were so many things that weren't just labor that were sort of coming up that were other forms of exploitation. Basically, it's just about wringing as much Robux out of the system as possible. It's something we could call the financialization of childhood. What that means is that a lot of the shady practices present in the real economy are here too, but targeted at kids. The kids are straight up gambling with money. Money which has been turned into Robux first so David Bazuki can get to it, but still. Scams are prevalent all over Roblox, including in their most popular game, Adopt Me. Here's Harrison again, the eight-year-old Roblox player we spoke to who's pretty savvy about problems with the platform. Harrison called Adopt Me, like the most scamming game. Harrison told us that kids or even adults can steal from each other in the game. There's also giant corporate experiences like Walmart Land or Nike Land, which are less like games and more like big loud stores. I'm gonna go get the burritos. So yes, Chipotle is now officially inside of Roblox. It's almost like going to the mall back in like the early 2000s, but this time online. I think the harm for kids is that they're being used as a way to generate more money or revenue for these companies without their consent. So all the so I haven't played Adopt Me personally. I actually did load it up today just to see, you know, what what was going on, but I, not not for very long. But like, you know, what they're talking about here kind of sounds like Second Life to me. Oh man, Second Life. That's a that's a game uh, I haven't thought about in a long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> We're aging ourselves here, like seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think I mentioned this earlier, right? But Playing or interacting online comes with dangers. Mm -hmm. People, whether kids or adults, or somewhere in between, will try and scam you and get you to trade uncommon in-game items for next to nothing. There's nothing new or inherent to Roblox here, right? Also, gambling um, gambling for money or, or Robux is against Roblox's terms of service, Yeah, and it will get accounts banned and it'll get those games permanently taken down mm -hmm. um and in their video they show like a quick clip of what looks to be like a texas hold'em game being played yep and they're insinuating there were like casino like games where players are gambling robux this this just isn't true um if an experience like that does get published which it's possible right there's sometimes there's bad experiences that get get published but they're quickly found and completely and like i said banned shut down everything is terminated um so it's just not true that that's happening on the platform if there is a game like that where you can play cards you're not playing for robux or anything it's some useless you know in-game currency that was just made for that game like um even random loot boxes that people can spend premium currencies on where they get like a certain chance to gain cool items um, by terms of service and, and rules and everything, those loot boxes have to be obtainable for non-paying players as well, right? So, like, just by playing the game normally, it has to be able for regular players to be able to earn and open some of those boxes. Yeah. Um, they can't be priced out. And, I mean, loot boxes in general in the game industry are a shady practice, and I think it's one of the things the game industry really could could step in and, and regulate more to to prevent predatory practices on on yep. the younger audiences totally. um but that's a game industry wide thing right um also as far as the the corporate games on roblox uh, they show walmart world here mm -hmm. um as far as those go you're seeing it more and more because tens of millions of kids teenagers and adults are playing roblox daily mm -hmm. every day so it's advertising for those corporations right yeah it makes sense it's immersive advertising you're you know we see an ad on tv okay but now you're living in this ad <laughs> um these companies like walmart you know they're hiring developers to make these games right they're they're hiring people to make these experiences for them this has nothing to do with roblox corporation this yeah. is again this is completely separate this is this is like the commissioning talk we had except on this on in this scope of things it's 
big corporations that are hiring talented developers to make these immersive advertisements for them. Um, these are paid jobs that big name brands are hiring adults to fill. They're not hiring my six year old daughter or my, you know, my nine year old son uh, to make these experiences. That, that's not who's making these. Yeah, and exactly. It's like that. That's the whole thing. Like, you know, Roblox is it's a platform, you know, they it, it's a tool, you know, they they kind of unleashed it onto the wild. And yeah, they have, you know, they have, uh, I guess, like certain flows in place and, and that kind of stuff. But ultimately, it's up to the people who are using it to use it fairly and uh, properly. And, you know, I mean, obviously, Roblox has to police that. But, uh, you know, it's it, it's just like anything where you, you, you put something out and then it gets used and it may not get used in the best ways, you know, but, um, you know, that's just the nature of these things. So, but it, it's funny that you mentioned loot boxes because like those uh, are actually banned in some parts of Europe because of their addictive nature. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy that, you know, like how, how different things are in different parts of the world. But I, I do agree, you know, that, you know, it, it, things like uh, loot boxes and, and, and anything that kind of, um, has that kind of uh, addictive? Well, let's use let's use the word um, uh, compelling, you know, instead. But uh, that 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 type of nature, it's you know, it, it kind of borders on uh, along the whole gambling thing, like you said. Yeah, I actually didn't know that about um, the European laws with that, and so that's great. I'm glad to see there's some some sort of movement in the industry in general to kind of yeah. you know curb that behavior. Yeah, exactly. Biggest and branded games are trying to squeeze kids for money, and they're all brimming with thieves and scam artists. Remember, this happens because there's tons of money, sorry, Robux, flowing through the platform. And the corporation gets at least a 30% cut whenever any of it moves around. Some other parents, they're budgeting probably 150, hundreds to 150 dollars a month. Harrison gets $20 a month for Roblox from his dad, and he's actually really conscious about not spending more of his dad's money. Do you want me to spend a hundred dollars or are no, you okay with the 20? No, I'm okay, okay with the 20 or the okay, So this is where I will say that Roblox has a good use case. Like I often use it to teach Fuzz about saving and budgeting. Like if he wants to buy something in a game, he knows he has to put in some work. For example, like by trying to raise money in a donation game, you know, like please buy me um, on the platform or doing stuff in real life to earn that Robux. Um, I think you know, Roblox does a good job teaching kids about values, more so than, you know, what they learn just by getting money in real life to spend on stuff. Because they don't, yeah. you know, they don't, they didn't earn that money by working for it, you know, for, you know, um, like a real job kind of thing. But, you know, maybe they did chores or whatever, but it doesn't equate to working an eight hour day or, you know, grinding for hours and hours in a donation game. Like, it's not easy. Like, you know, we, we, we see like a lot of the, you know, people in the game who say, you know, how, how hard is it, how hard it is to actually, you know, make even like 50 Robux, you know, for example. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like that might be a little extreme, but I think it's, it's a step in the right direction in, you know, teaching kids about patience and saving and that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, <laughs> I'd say in my household, uh, we do not work Robux into our monthly budget. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not something, uh, you know, we, we put as a line item for sure, <laughs> our yeah. budget. Yeah, okay, uh, my, my kids, uh, they can earn money by doing chores and stuff like that. And, uh, but they can't, they can't even use that money to buy like whatever they want. Right. Like yeah. we, we still have to, you know, pun intended, moderate what they spend it on. Yeah. yeah. Um, they have to ask and then we'll have a talk about it. Like, the dad in the video says, oh, other families are budgeting, you know, $100, $150 a month for Robux. Yeah. We'll stop. Yeah. Don't do that. Exactly. If it's a problem and, you know, financially and you can't do that, then you should stop enabling your kids to spend that much freely on Roblox. Like, you as the parent are in charge of your wallet. Your kids aren't in charge of your wallet. Roblox isn't in charge of your wallet. You are. Stop stop spending that <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly that's like 100 percent well said and it's funny because um you know this actually reminds me of of a dr phil episode where and, and you know you know asmon gold i don't know if you you know who asmon gold is um um i'm unfamiliar he's yeah he's like a world of warcraft um youtuber um he plays mm. other games too but he does a lot of reaction videos and he did a reaction video on this dr phil episode where 
this gamer kid he basically runs the household because his parents just can't control him. He's like 14, I think. Um, like his mom has to bribe him with virtual currency in like, I don't know, Call of Duty or something, whatever he was playing, um, just for him to take a shower. Like, it's oh ridiculous. Like, like the kid, you know, and Asmon goes like, maybe the problem isn't, you know, that he has to take a shower. It's like, you know, there's, there's like a whole lot of other things, you know, that you need to unravel here. Yeah. But like, there's and, underlying like, issues. Yeah, exactly. And like, like he, he like if he smashes his, his Xbox controller, they just buy him another one. And like Dr. Phil is like, like, why? Why did you buy him another, you know, like, uh, or, sorry, it's Asmon Gold. He's like, why? Just stop. Like, exactly what you said. He's like, that's what made me think of this. He's like, just don't buy him another controller. Problem solved, you know? Like, um, yeah, it's that easy. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, they finally decided to send him to a boot camp, you know, like typical Dr. Phil style, like for a mm -hmm. month at the end of the episode. Um, it, they 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 put up a little thing on like uh, on the screen in you know white text on a black background and basically said that uh, his parents pulled him out after eight days because the kid was complaining that it was too cold. I was like, oh my god! Like you just watched this whole episode just to find out you know that it didn't even end up helping at all. But anyway, that's a whole that other is, story. <laughs> that makes that just makes me think of um, you know South Park and how uh, Eric Cartman's mom, the character Eric Cartman, has yeah. mom like is with him like he, he treats her so poorly and yeah. is like so misbehaving and his mom's like oh it's okay pookie like, yeah it's just enables yeah. Him. yeah exactly <laughs> oh man yeah anyway let's let's keep going through the video we wanted to focus specifically on the labor and financial exploitation of children, but we do have to point out one thing that Harrison said about predators on Roblox that blew our minds and even got our cameraman to step in. There's a lot of like uh, like uh, people, like our adults, and they try to get advice from you, like from you, so they could research you and try to track you down. I don't know why. When did that happen? I don't know, like, I, I don't know, like, people, like, start doing it now. So, so like, so, someone's asking, like, your name? Yeah, your name, your Like, your info. real name or yeah, your, your avatar name? Your real name and your info about, like, your places, like, where you live, mm -hmm. what age are you. And uh, what I just do is just lie about my age. Well, how do you know it's that kind of person? They introduce themselves in a certain way? Or? For adults, they tap re type really fast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Adults type really fast, yeah. So that's why... I know who it is, like a kid or adult, like they type like for like minutes and the adult type in like for like two seconds and then they're done. So like, which but, game does this happen in? In like every single game. Okay, I don't really want to get into the predatory aspects of the platform in this video, but this is a problem really on any platform where kids have access to chat and like we talked about, you know, this before. Um, I think Roblox does a decent job of auto moderation. Sometimes it it is overkill, you know, mm -hmm. with the whole tagging and the chat thing. But um, <laughs> like it 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 does it does work well. Um, and I I would prefer it to be overkill than not. You know, um, I think it's it's important you know for parents to step in and teach their kids about internet safety, like we we discussed, and actually like play with their kids while their kids are playing Roblox. Um, and like you know, just like you said, you you got into it because because of of your son and you know Fuzz also you know he was the one who kind of got me into it. Um, and I was like, I didn't really understand Roblox before, and I kind of like I, I admittedly yeah, there are the tags right there, yeah. <laughs> um, and ask for your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see exactly, it works. Um, so like you know, I I I was one of those parents. Like I'll admit that I didn't understand Roblox, and I I was judging it before. You know, I heard what other people were saying about it, and you know, I kind of judged it before even knowing. Um, anything about it. I didn't even know at the time that you could make games on it and stuff. I thought it was just like, you know, one of those things where like an open world kind of thing, you know, where kids could just play and um, like, like uh, what was that? Um, Habbo Hotel or whatever it was called a long time ago. Um, mm. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, that, I think that that's that's on, on the parents to do. It might not be easy for a lot of parents to do, and I understand that, you know, because, you know, they might be busy or, or whatever, but um, you know, I do think that if you're going to let your your kids loose on a platform like this, then you have to take the time to talk to them and really help them understand like what they're getting into and how to keep themselves safe because they're not going to know, you know, what to do or how to handle it. Like, it, especially if it's new for them, they're just going to, you know, they're they're going to think everything is all innocent and rosy, and you know, they're going to get into trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I mean, I completely agree. Uh, you know, te teaching your children about online safety is your responsibility. Um, there's no threat that's inherent to Roblox. The threat 
that's inherent or I should say a threat is inherent to the internet at large, yeah. right? Anytime you're uh you're interacting online. Yeah, exactly. Just to recap here, this is an eight year old child talking about the lengths he has to go to avoid predators on a children's platform. One of the largest kids platforms on earth, which has again made billions off of these children. Meanwhile, the CEO is saying things like this. Do you think more mature things like nudity will ever be allowed on Roblox in any way? I think um, what I would say is we would lead first and foremost with safety and civility, and then second with mirroring what happens in the physical world. And so I, w I would never rule it out. There's a standard of care if you're running a school or making children's TV that you're going to treat kids with incredible care and caution. What's nuts about Roblox is that it is arguably the largest source of children's entertainment today, and it operates with just the absolute bare minimum of care for its audience. So it sounds to me like Roblox is trying to become another second life, you know, especially now that they've added the 17 plus experiences. Like, I mean, you you do really have to jump through hoops to get access to that, like real ID verification and stuff. I actually went through that flow and yeah, it was not easy, you know, to, to, to actually get verified and all that. But, you know, it makes sense that their audience is getting older. Um, so they do have to adapt, you know, in some way or another. But I guess like, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, um, what you thought about the whole 17 plus thing. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's natural progression. Um, like I, you know, like I said, Roblox likes to say, uh, it's grown up, you know, Roblox has grown up. It's, it's not just a Lego game, uh, like it was in kind of, you know, 2006, 2008, all that. Um, it has something to offer all age groups and it has been, uh, year after year getting a larger population of older age groups. Uh, you have to... I mean, you have to fill out surveys now on your games, right, to, to answer things like, is there blood? Is there violence? How much? How often does it happen? Is it realistic? Um, is there alcohol references in your game? Yep. Is there girlfriend or boyfriend references, you know? And that's also that Roblox can put an age rating on your game and uh, users or... I guess more so their parents, right? They can set parental controls on their account that only let them play games rated for certain ages. Yeah, and like, you know, I've definitely seen the customizability, customizability bleh, of the parental <laughs> controls on the platform. So um, yeah, definitely uh, it's, it, there are, the tools are there, you know, you just have to know how to use them. We found this video really difficult to make because, more so than other workers we cover, the Roblox workforce, mostly children, are at a unique disadvantage to fight for their rights. It's a community that doesn't often speak out about Roblox for fear of reprisal or for fear of hurting their own standing within the community. It's not easy for them to escape this ecosystem. I was an art teacher for a little while, mm -hmm. so I've taught kids about the age of Roblox's core audience. So like younger artists or game devs mm -hmm. are incredibly passionate and frankly would do this stuff just because they love it. And they do. Exactly. Like, I, I feel like even if Roblox didn't offer cash outs, they would still be pretty successful. Like, look at Minecraft, for example. There are like tons and tons of coding camps, you know, where they teach kids how to make mods and uh, in Minecraft and like use redstone and you know that kind of thing, so like kids are just naturally drawn to this stuff. Oh, absolutely! I completely agree. It's um, you know, it's creative, and it's fun. Um, yeah. The Minecraft thing, actually, glad you bring that up. I, it's again, even there, even in Minecraft, it's not just kids; it's all ages. Like yeah. my, uh, you know, I have a coworker who. Uh, is in his you know 30s, uh, early mid 30s, and he just started making games in Unity. Now learning how to make games in Unity game engine, but mm -hmm. he has years of experience of making mods for Minecraft yeah. and like custom servers with custom rule sets and things like that. So I mean, it's you know it's something that transcends age. Uh, I think that's something that defines gaming in general. Yeah, and like the Minecraft is another platform, not platform, but is a game you know that has an aging or an audience that has aged with it as well. So it's very similar in that respect. And they do. That sort of worker base is ripe for exploitation. And loving what you do should not be licensed to be unfairly compensated or to be exploited. 
Young Roblox developers like Antonio want to make a career out of their work, and Roblox is priming them to work in a professional video game industry that already has its own problems with labor exploitation. So labor exploitation in the traditional gaming industry was definitely a much larger problem in the past, but I think a lot of studios have gotten away from this mentality, which you know is good to see, of course. Certainly the, the company that I work for doesn't have these issues. Um, they're super flexible, you know, they have unlimited paid time off. Uh, it's a fully remote company with people from all around the world. So I hope that you know more and more companies start taking this approach. Uh, you know, it's more like a design, it's it's a design-led approach, basically like you know, you're 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 focusing on on the design of the game and 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 the the uh, the fun factor of it and you know how well it plays and stuff rather than looking at deadlines. You know what I mean? So, it's it's certainly not um, being accepted by people who work in the industry anymore. Like you know that that whole uh, working overtime mentality and stuff. I think. Yeah, uh, I think the game industry always had a reputation of being a hard industry to work in, both mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it, it seems to be getting better, at least from what I can, uh, you know, I can see uh, from the from the outside of the general game industry. Um, yeah, I think having live ops in games now has helped that uh, no longer needing those 80 plus hour crunch weeks leading up to the launch of a game because you can push, you know, an update at any time, even after the game is shipped. Yeah, live service games um, have really changed the landscape for sure, I guess. I would say that in some cases it's also made developers lazy. <laughs> like, uh, in you know, they they they're fine with just putting out mediocre stuff and then trying to fix it later. But uh, oh, it's God, good that yeah. yeah, like fans have not uh, let that slide, which is good. Um, and there there have been some great you know comeback stories, like No Man's Sky, for example, um, one of the worst launches you know in in, in known history, I guess. And uh, like it's now, great one game of, now, yeah, <laughs> one of the best games that you can play now. Yeah, exactly. And, it's funny because like, you know, we both like Starfield and there's been a lot of comparisons to No Man's Sky uh, and people are actually going back to No Man's Sky now. Um, but uh, because, you know, they're like, they're finding things in Starfield that are lacking, but that's again, another, yeah, yeah, another yeah. story, but. Um, oh, space travel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the standards that Roblox Corporation is setting for development and what represents fair pay and what represents, you know, like oversight into workplace malpractice, that's stuff that is then surely only going to like widen and get bigger. So like the children growing up playing Roblox now who expect, uh, you know, like 20% cut of the 100% of revenue that their game makes, you know, they're going to grow up and that's what they will be used to. Roblox is- Again, I, I think this comes down to parental involvement. Like talk to your kids and explain the situation to them. Tell them that they shouldn't be in it for the money. You know, let them uh, let them know that uh, when they're in the workforce for real, that this isn't something that they should expect. Well, yeah, geez, parents being involved in their kids' lives and teaching them is a that that's a crazy concept these days. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean. It's, it's, it's funny that we have to say that, but I mean, I guess, you know, it is what it is. It's what I see, unfortunately. Yeah. ...isn't blind to the issues that we've talked about. They just know that their audience doesn't have power and that mainstream media and legislators aren't paying attention. Again, this comes down to lack of competition. But Roblox Corp is trying to solve their digital child labor problem in their own way before anyone notices. First, David Bazuki wants to age up their user base. There's still a lot of room for growth in USA 9 through 12, but historically, the opportunity we have in 17 and up, it's massive, really. And he also wants to eventually replace a lot of the labor itself with artificial intelligence. We started rolling out more creation type AI, so both material generation and code generation. There's that Westworld episode where someone sits down and says, do this and right. do this. The narrative that, storyteller That's all role. gonna happen. You think so? Absolutely. And the AI models replacing developers would be trained on millions of experiences built by Roblox users. Most of these users will never see a single cent of comp compensation for their work that is building the future profits of this company. Roblox I don't know about this to be honest like AI is a whole other topic, you know, for discussion and while I definitely agree that in no time at all, you know, we're going to see a real like real sophisticated stuff in terms of what AI can do in the gaming industry. Like we've already been seeing some pretty crazy stuff. Um, but I'm not going to hold my breath over what effect 
you know, it's going to have on Roblox. But um, if you would love to hear your thoughts on that, Ice. Yeah, I think I think some of the AI is useful, and it, it can certainly save already skilled people time, uh, where they can automate things that you know they would have had to manually type all out or, or do. Um, I think some of the AI that's out there is overkill and is used as a crutch. Um, yeah. Like an example I can think of is ChatGPT, right? Being being used to create pre-made code, um, and this isn't just in game dev, right? We we use this uh, in my full time work too. Sometimes, oh yeah. Um, a, a lot of time that code isn't going to work without some tweaks, right? And someone who doesn't already know how to actually code in that language, and they thought they were just maybe getting a free pass, uh, you know, without having to learn, like they're not going to be able to make those tweaks because they don't understand what's happening in the code. They don't understand how that code is worded or what it means or or how it interacts with itself so they're not going to know what to tweak or what to fix um so i'm not too worried about about that um although on a on a caveat you know rdc 23 is is going on right now right mm -hmm. and uh yesterday they had the the keynote uh speech and i watched that live and um i was a little late so i had to go back but one of the things that Roblox has announced uh, as far as AI is two new things. One, they're going to be using it to uh, make it so you can type in text prompts to dress your avatar oh. in, in games and stuff like that. Like you can say, like, I want to, you know, they use like a, uh, an astronaut as an example. Like, I want to be dressed as an astronaut in this kind of environment, you know, and it tried to like put together like an outfit like that. Um so there were some cool things with that. You know, I think that's a neat use of AI. Um, and then on the developer side, they showed it where people were saying, like, I want a game where players have to explore ruins. And it generated some basic 3D assets, um, like, and already kind of laid them out, right? Okay. And with some trees and some, like, broken columns and rubble and stuff. And then it said, here's the assets I used. And it showed you, like, a list of the models they used, I guess, so you can you can use them further. Uh, but then the in the example, the, the user was able to further tweak that environment by saying, oh, I'd like the, the trees to have a more northern feel. And it, like, updated to make, you know, more, more types of trees you would find, you know, in northern the northern hemisphere and northern environments. Yeah. Um, so that, that part, you know... That's going to fall into where I start feeling like with the coding, where people might start using it as a crutch, trying to get by actually learning, you know, environmental art and design and level design and things like that, or 3D, even 3D modeling and stuff. And I think for some things it'll be fine, but I, I think people will run into issues if they try and make a whole game that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess there's a couple of things uh, that came to mind. Um, when when you mentioned you know that people are using it as a crutch and they they were not going to understand you know what's happening in the code and it's it's like you know bug fixing is a huge part of 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 game development and if you don't understand what you're what you're putting together and if there's issues with it you're not going to understand how to debug it and that's just going to be a major roadblock for you so um and like i've i've definitely tried experimenting with chat gpt to write code in studio just to see you know what it would do and like the results are just hilarious like at times like at one point, you know, it, it wrote an extra 30 lines to do something that, you know, I didn't even ask it to do um, when it could have just done what I wanted it to do in the, you know, two to three lines tops, you know, like at, at the very beginning. And then like it, it just did this like nested for loop thing. Like it was just, like insane. I was like, what are you even trying to do? Like, I don't know. It's just looking at us like, what is this supposed to be exactly? And it like, and I, and I was like, okay, I know this isn't going to work. I just plug, I just plugged it into a script and tried running it. And it was like, you know, 13 errors. I was like, yeah, I, <laughs> like, I don't even know how people yeah. actually use this. Like it's just, I mean, it's but obviously it, it's early, but you know. To somebody who doesn't know though, you know, they'd look at that and go, all right, like this must be like, yeah, this yeah. must be the most efficient way to do this. And this is going to work. Right. Yeah, and then exactly. you start seeing all them red flags pop up in there. Yep. Like, oh, I don't know what to do. Yeah, exactly. And even if it does work, it's not going to be efficient. It's not going to, it, it's going to be, you know, not well optimized probably half the time, but yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. This has had years to deal with the problems we've outlined. We just can't trust them to handle it on their own anymore. 
The product is so good that it's not going anywhere. It's got so much funding now that there's not going to be a competitor anytime soon. So this is the company. This is almost like the public utility. This is what we've got. But it's it's a utility with absolutely no oversight and no governments even understanding what it's doing, let alone legislating against it. And that is absurd. So what sort of oversight do the kids on Roblox want? Lower how much Robux you need to cash out and increase how much the Robux is worth and lower the cut Robux takes to maybe like 10% or something. The FTC has been called upon to take action in major recent cases in the gaming sector, and the Federal Trade Commission Act specifically prohibits unfair or deceptive acts or practices in commerce. Half of the kids in America are on Roblox, and all of them deserve labor protections. Roblox is dictating the conditions of our future, beta testing the labor rights of the metaverse on children. If we don't regulate them now, the business model and predatory practices of Roblox are coming for all of us. So there it is, problem solved. I mean, really, that's all there is to it, right? Yeah, of course, right? Yeah, it's that easy. I mean, look, we covered that. Um, but go look on Reddit. Go look on the dev forums, go look on Twitter, on Discord, you know, as long as there's been Roblox, people have been saying they want a bigger cut or they want lower minimums and whatnot. Um, oblivious to the intricacies of all, you know, of all the historical proof that shows the company keeps providing this as growth allows, you know, you, Roblox made 2.2 billion in revenue I, I said earlier we were going to do like a, a little bit of math here right mm. so sorry if you hate math <laughs> um you know roblox made 2.2 billion dollars in revenue in 2022 right mm. they paid developers 624 million dollars right yeah so in 2022 they paid out 624 million dollars to different developers right um, no, no small chunk of change by any means, right? Um, but people say, well, they made 2.2 billion, right? So, you know, was that a quarter of it? Like greedy corporations. Um, if each Robux was worth one cent to developers like it is to Roblox, then by using 22, 2022's numbers, Roblox would have paid about 1.783 billion of that revenue just to the devs. Or to make it simpler, they would have paid about 81% of their total revenue for the year just to pay developers. Yeah. And if you look at the charts that we talked about earlier, you know, and, or that are in some of these articles, you can see that the other, you know, 19% wouldn't even have covered the App Store fees. Yeah. And it's their whole revenue. They haven't paid their own employees. They haven't done any of the other things. No, no research or development, no marketing, no, none of that. Like... Um, they haven't, or, or even, you know, let alone taken a profit. Um, so I'm making a joke about it. Right. But this is the math people aren't putting together when they look at this stuff. Yeah. I'm sure as the revenue rises, devs will see larger amounts. I mean, they, they have historically with Roblox and I think right. that's going to continue. Yeah, for sure. And, and it, like, it's funny that you mentioned that, you know, they, they paid out 624 million. That's how much they paid out. That's not including what they you know, other developers could potentially cash out, right? Like, you know, they have to have that in escrow, basically. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah. It's like, you know, they have to account for that, too. It's not, it's just, yeah, it's just like, when you actually sit down and look at this, you know, in a practical manner, it, like, it's just like that, that's what makes videos like the one that we watched today just so much more ridiculous, but. Um, and it doesn't talk about, uh, it doesn't, that doesn't even take into consideration people who aren't getting paid in Robux, right? The, all the freelancers, the commissioning that we're talking about, right? Where people yeah. take Roblox as a platform, they learn how to make stuff on there with yep. the free tools, yep. and then they sell their skills to other people, and they never even interact with the Robux currency system. They yep. just get paid through PayPal or through another, you know, currency system like that in their in their local currency, and, and they make money that way, right? Yep. Like, that's that's a whole other thing with that you, you couldn't even track how much money changes hands that way. Exactly. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, well, there you have it, folks. Let us know in the comments what you think about everything we talked about here today. Ice, any parting thoughts you want to share about all this? Um, well, I mean, we we, uh, we certainly went over quite a lot. There was a lot to talk about here, but yeah, um, plenty more too. I guess, yeah, I'm sure there is. Uh, I guess if there is things to walk away with, and and generally speaking. 
research is really important, guys. Um, and it's it's so easy to see a misleading or a sensationalized video making huge claims like this. You know, trial labor, or Roblox, um, and just show. think, and and just think, wow, that's a professionally produced video. So I mean, it it must be true, right? Like, look into the topic, research how something works, look at the numbers, right? Numbers don't lie; they can be misleading sometimes but if you get them all together they don't lie um also never underestimate how someone is willing to pretend that there's child victims if they want you to agree with their point uh because you know when people say for the children if you say no <laughs> you immediately look bad <laughs> um so most things in life are not black and white they're they're shades of gray uh Fizz, I, that's thanks for hosting me. Um, oh, yeah. Thanks for thanks for putting this all together. I really hope this um, I hope this clears things up for people that are watching, uh, especially you know if they've already seen that video or they're they're going through that video the first time now. Um, you know, or at the very least, I hope this whole conversation that we've had intrigues them into doing their own research in any topic in general, you know, or any any um, hot button issue. Um, there should be some links. Uh, I think I'd share it too. If you if you're gonna put them in the description or whatnot, yep. that's just to some of the uh, information I referenced too. So again, doing your own research, guys. There's there's some sources. Awesome. Uh, if you want to read through them all yourselves. Yeah, I'll definitely include that stuff for sure. Um, and yeah, man. Yeah, you know what? Like, it was a pleasure as always. You know, thanks Ice Time for joining me today and talking about this with everyone. You know, I hope everyone watch uh, who watched this enjoyed it. And if you want to see more content like this, let us know in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Ice Time Studios. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, Fizz and Fuzz, make sure you do that too. Also, check out both the Ice Time Studios Discord server and the Fizz and Fuzz Discord server. Links in the description. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Ice Time. Hey, thank you. And uh, until next time, this is Ice Time. And Fizz. Signing off. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for watching The Classroom. We're always looking to tell more stories like this one, unpacking economic systems that impact all of our daily lives. Are there any other games or social platforms you think could use this kind of analysis? Sound off in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe!